Sorry for the late um, introduction of the meeting, meeting minutes. I'm here with John Cobb, Town Administrator again. Um, we're going to be discussing the different things that went on that are of interest to the citizens of Wellston. Um, the first thing I'm going to ask him about is the um, during the course of the meeting there were five nominees for the Planning Commission and uh, five nominees and one alternate and I would like to know is there anything um, what's next for this committee? So uh, within our municipal ordinances and state law it provides for Planning Commission or Planning Committee. Um, the Planning Committee members will work on zoning matters, um, community planning for future growth, um, also within the region. So these members of this committee, they do not necessarily live within the municipal boundaries. They're going to work on planning per state statutes of the areas surrounding the town as well to plan for future growth. Um, they will work on issues like uh, zoning applications mm -hmm. for businesses that want to come in if it's in a zoned an agricultural area and they want to put in a business there. The zoning committee or the planning committee will review the application, um, review all the information provided by the applicant, and they will um, work on the zoning of that or the rezoning of the area. Mm -hmm. Um, they'll also work on uh, promoting the community and recruiting um, employers and businesses to the area. Great. That's good news. So when is their first official full meeting? And is the public so, allowed to attend? Oh, absolutely. It's an open meeting and it falls within the Open Meetings Act. So the public is always welcome to attend that meeting and uh, they can sign in and voice their concerns or comments um, and interact with the board. Um, I believe this board that sits on the planning committee is very interested in public input mm -hmm. and would love to see some of the public at those meetings. Um, they had their first meeting on October 29th, okay. and they set their meetings for the third Monday of each month at 6 p.m. Okay. Um, so they will meet here at Town Hall at 6 p.m. on the third Monday. Mm -hmm. So the 29th meeting was just the setting up for the it next was the, meeting? Or? Well, it was the okay. initial meeting, and um, basically they discussed, they nominated their board structure. Mm -hmm. So within the ordinance, it states that at their first meeting, they will nominate their chair, their co-chair, um, secretary, so on and so forth. Um, the chair of that committee is Skylar McLehaney. Okay. Uh, she's a resident of just south of town here. Uh, the co-chair is Michael Demores, mm -hmm. and then you have um, and then you have Chris Dency. Um, who lives here in town, Levi Vasca and Carl Phillips. Those are the uh, committee members. And then Jake Snyder is the alternate. He'll fill in in the absence of um, one of the other members. Okay, that's great. Okay, so basically that was it for the first part of that mission uh, meeting. And, and their agenda is posted at Town Hall on the information board right outside the, the side door here. Okay. Um, it's always posted 24 hours in advance of the meeting. Okay, yeah. And... Um, I'll try to get on the Facebook page their schedule meetings so that people can attend as yeah. well. Okay, so we have some things going on with Wilson Public Works Authority. Yeah, lots of exciting stuff. Um, so we wanted to discuss that. Uh, in unfinished business, I know that most of that was tabled, uh, but it seemed like, is there anything there that was tabled that we would need to prepare to discuss the next meeting? Um, of big relevance uh, to... Yeah, let me try this out. It's been a few weeks. Right. Let me review here. Um, unfinished business. So we talked about a hydro engineered hydraulic study. Uh, the engineered hydraulic study basically reviews all of our water line capacity and uh, tells us where we set with it, what we're going to need to do to grow, and um, what we kind of need to be doing to prepare for the uh, needed replacement of lines, so on and so forth. Um, we were hoping to get a uh, basically a kind of a, a grant or a principal forgiveness loan mm -hmm. from the uh, Oklahoma Water Resource Board, but they, we were not able to get that. They had expended all their funding on it. Mm -hmm. So we're looking for um, just some funding on that. So that was tabled f until I can kind of get some information funding that okay. um, and give some options to the board, let them decide whether they want to fund it out of capital or finance it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about, it's not a huge expense. It's about $8,000. Yeah. Uh, but it's very much needed for us to move forward with some of our planning activity. Mm -hmm. um, and then the uh, water supply, um, let's see here, the water supply capacity development checklist, that is, it's just kind of goes, it's part of our planning um, 
our sustainability planning that we're doing. And it's just a basically a survey for the board members. And it was tabled because we haven't all completed it yet. Okay. So it'll kind of fall on through there. It's on there to kind of remind us, hey, we still need this done. Right, right. Um, the water and sewer tap fee um, rate increase, we're still doing some research on that to find make sure that we're um, uh, on par with our costs for mm -hmm. the water and sewer taps. And then irrigation meter, um, that was an idea that was brought up uh, to maybe um, put a special rate on irrigation mm -hmm. systems, but uh, we the board decided not to take any action on that at this time. Okay. Okay, so new business. This is the interesting stuff. Um, a community development block grant, REAP combo grant. Um, what is this and what is it going to do for us? So, um, we were identified, I work with COED, which is the Central Oklahoma Economic Development District. That's our COG, or our Council of Government, that kind of helps us with grant funding. Um, they administer our SENA grant, which is the senior citizen grant that we get to help pay for the food for the senior citizens. Um, and they also help us with legislative action and other grants. So we were identified um, as a CDBG REAP combo opportunity, which is a non-competitive grant um, that will help us fund a water wastewater sewer or water wastewater project. Um, there was a couple projects that were listed on our community development plan, and one of them is water line expansion. So we needed to get water out to the west of town, out to the west Y. Uh, that was part of a 120 month plan um, when we annexed that about five years ago. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, the board identified that and voted to pursue that project. Uh, we had an engineered uh, study done on it or an engineered cost estimate done uh, through Myers Engineering. And the project total, the engineered estimate is around 211,000. Mm -hmm. um, that's uh, running a six inch main out there. Uh, we'll have fire hydrants out there. Um, and we are guaranteed or we're getting 150,000 of that covered. Great. So um, the cost, the actual cost of that's probably gonna fall in under that 211 just because there's a lot of that we can do ourselves. Mm -hmm. So that'll cut a lot of that cost out. Um, and hopefully, uh, this project will start, if everything goes well through the grant cycle, it'll start in probably April. Okay. And we'll start getting that water or that line laid. And um, this will really help us kind of, we've had the, the floodplain there has kind of been a barrier in the creek to getting water out there. Mm -hmm. uh, this will help us get out there. And it'll also give us, um, you know, a leg out there for future expansion. Right. And if, you know, residents decide to grow out there and they want water, I know there's some pockets of, of bad water out there uh, or low recovery rate of wells, we'll be able to provide consistent uh, water to those customers out there. That's cool. Um, also, I mean, I'm thinking with you adding fire hydrants out there, it's gonna bring some insurance rates down for some of those people as well. I would assume it would because they're gonna be closer, even the ones that aren't in the annexed area right now, they're gonna be that much closer to a fire hydrant. Mm -hmm. So uh, <laughs> yeah, if you live in that area, once we get those done, make sure you call your insurance agent and say, hey, we got some new fire hydrants yes. pretty close to the house. Um, and it'll help with fire, or, you know, wildlife firefighting because we won't have to run a tanker or mm -hmm. a brush pumper all the way back. We can fill them right there. So this benefits everybody in big ways. Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay, so um, moving on to the town board, uh, they discussed a cemetery committee and member nomination. I'm guessing that that, I mean, that was done, that is something that's done. These people are now cemetery. This is now a formed committee? Yes. Okay. Um, I, I'm sorry, let me catch up. It's a, <laughs> the town board. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Uh, yes, so the creation of the cemetery committee. Yes, um, those members have all confirmed that they will um, uh, sit on that uh, committee for the exception of, of Daryl Goggin. He um, he declined the nomination okay. um, just because he lives in the city and mm. just, uh, but he did appreciate that being nominated for that. <clears throat> um, so, there's not a lot of action on that right now because, well, the mowing and everything, mm -hmm. the grass is dead. But yeah. we will get that set up, and I'm working on getting them all a um, 
schedule the meetings and we'll probably do it quarterly at first and they will help guide uh, the future expansion growth and maintenance and care of the cemetery okay really appreciate all their their volunteer um, them all volunteer and to set on that committee as well Okay, and then uh, moving on to new business, unless there's something there that I've overlooked that you think is... No, uh, the, the cemetery fees and groundskeeping, we're going to defer that to the committee and okay. let them review that and come up with some plans and actions on that. Yeah. Okay, um, there was a $40,000 contract for CIP slash COEDD administration. Uh -huh. So um, back in the spring, we were awarded a... CDBG <laughs> Community Improvement Planning Grant okay. uh, from the United States Department of Commerce mm -hmm. in the amount of forty thousand dollars. We use COED, which is our COG, the Central Oklahoma Economic Development District, to administer that grant. So they and they also are doing the uh, community and plan improvement plan study. Mm -hmm. So they will be coming through the community, mapping all of our assets, inventorying everything we have. Um, and they're going to do a um, a GIS map of the town. Mm -hmm. So all of our fire hydrants, water valves, uh, sewer manholes, everything like that will have a brand new fresh map laid out for it. Okay. Um, so this was just the basically housekeeping side of it. We had to sign the contract. The town board has signed the contract with co-ed to administer that grant. Okay. Um, and I'm assuming that the Approval of the initial invoice of thirteen mm -hmm. three three three. We have to do with that. Yes, it's broken up into three uh, three payments. Okay. Uh, the initial invoice covers the uh, inventory and starting of the their work on that. Um, and this is a pass through grant. So basically, uh, we set we open an account a CDBG mm -hmm. account at the bank, and they invoice us. We submit that invoice to Department of Commerce, they deposit the money, then we write a check. Mm -hmm. So we're not out forty thousand right. dollars ever on this grant. That's it's um, it's completely covered by the Department of Commerce. Okay. Um and I have a question about um, what is the item M O U L uh, for the Lincoln County Emergency Management. Uh, an M O U is a memorandum of understanding. Okay. Um, so, w Lincoln County Emergency Management presented us with a, a memorandum of understanding for the use of the 150 megahertz fire ban. Um, the town of Wilson, we don't have any uh, of our own frequencies for radio transmission, okay. so we utilize uh, Lincoln County Emergency Management's okay. Lincoln County Fire Channel, okay. and um, they uh, just wanted it to housekeeping basically okay. uh, stating you know no unauthorized use of the frequency so on and so forth of course um i believe we touched on this one of the last times we spoke but um the job description that that thing was amended of, of your i believe of your job yes where you could um hire or hire part-time employees right so it, it basically allows me to on the part-time positions um because of the nature of those positions sometimes they come and go mm -hmm frequently because it's just part-time, um, people get other jobs or what have you. Um, in order to ensure continued workflow, um, the board has decided to allow me to hire and you know basically fill those positions or remove those positions if necessary. Um, of course all that would, you know, I refer to the board and communicate with them frequently regarding the matters of employment and so on and so forth. But um, this way allows if we have a vacancy within say the street top, street department or the ground maintenance department, I can post it and we can get it filled as soon as possible right. instead of having to schedule continuous special meetings mm -hmm. and or wait month to month. Yeah, that's important. Um, I, I think this one I was gonna ask about, I think it was tabled, but I wanted to ask about it anyway because it sounded cool. <laughs> um, no, it wasn't table. Um, there was discussion of uh, the music stage at Gazebo Park and uh, Lighthouse Construction is going to... Well, it was tabled. Oh, it was. Okay. Yeah, um, so that we could get some more information on that, like a plan. Mm -hmm. um, Eric Barnes with Lighthouse Construction volunteered to create, build a basically like a sound stage over there. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, if the town would pay for the cost of the materials and everything. We presented that to the board. Um, 
they wanted to see some maybe some plans on it. Mm -hmm. So this would be in addition to the gazebo. It'd be its own separate area. Yeah, I think it would be over toward where the power pole is over mm -hmm. here, kind of in the corner, so that they could set up, you know, a small stage and mm -hmm. um, I maybe the acoustics would be a little better. Right, right. <clears throat> Uh, so we'll see on that yeah. the, where the plans kind of come along on that. Yeah, that, that was interesting. Yeah. I'm excited about doing anything with the parks around here. Um, and uh, a little fun note, uh, there were some kids that were awarded uh, public service certificates for the Fresh Paint Days event. Yeah, um, we, uh, Mayor Paul Whitna signed a certificate saying, you know, thank you for your public service. and that, it's really good to encourage the younger kids to get involved in your community. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's some rewarding benefits to helping others, and I thought that was really nice. It was. I like the pictures. Um, yeah. So, in in reference to that, um, are we actually doing the voting contest this year? Um, this year, we did not because of the time frame right. getting in, and then also with the with the murals being placed on there yeah. and the time we needed to do that, we really didn't qualify to enter the contest because we kind of went. <laughs> big and, and extra and above and beyond <laughs> it really wouldn't be fair to the other right. uh, contestants um, you know we took first place last year yeah um, let, let somebody else win it this year <laughs> next year you know what we'll come back big and bad and take it again right that's right that's right <laughs> but um, that's really all i have unless there's something you feel that needs to be discussed um oh we were discussing some um kind of related to the growth of the community um information yeah um so, I mean, it's kind of third party information, but you know, uh, a lot of people will probably be interested to hear about the expansion of the um, casino west of town. I hear that, you know, that uh, section that's just north of um, north and west, a little bit of the current casino location, they're going to be putting the large hotel mm -hmm. casino resort there. Um, I was, I heard in a meeting that, I mean, this is just hearsay, of course, right. no, not verified, but that they were. Uh, going to be putting an exit over off the turnpike for that and it's going to be quite a big uh, location which will really benefit our area residually from the travelers coming to that casino they'll come over to Wellston probably to get gas or come downtown and see our murals mm -hmm. so that's something that I'm kind of excited to see where that mm -hmm. goes and and what the progress is on it but um, any questions, or if you want to show up to a meeting, they're, yeah. they're all public meetings. Yeah. Get involved, ask questions, sign in to speak. Yeah. Um, they welcome it. Absolutely. And if you ever have anything, concerns, questions, or comments, call us here at Town Hall 405 356 2476. We're available to answer those questions. Uh, if we don't have the answer, we'll do our best to research it and find the answer for you. Um, and get involved. Uh, there's more ways to get involved now than ever. I think mm -hmm. probably with the community, you have a planning committee that wants to hear your thoughts and ideas for the growth of the community. You have a very receptive board of trustees uh, that want to hear from you. Mm -hmm. um, there's a chamber of commerce that's active. There's the American Legion. If, you know, There's a lot to do in the community. Mm -hmm. And um, if we all work together, we'll have uh, great success. Mm -hmm. This has been the October meeting minutes and time with John Cobb. Thank you guys. Thank you.